What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with another lesson in our coordinate plane playlist. We are going to be completing an XY chart and graphing in the first quadrant today. Let's see what our objective is today. So our objective today, today I will be able to complete a pattern chart and graph the points in the first quadrant. Again, sticking in the first quadrant today. So as a review, um, we are going to be working with pattern charts today. Now you may have heard them in previous grades called input output charts where you put a number in and you get a number out. As you get older, you're going to hear them referred to as function charts. I like to call them pattern charts because it best describes them with what we're going to be doing in our lessons. So, it's important to know that every pattern chart has a rule, okay? And sometimes the rules are written like this with two different variables. Sometimes it might just say add five, but we're gonna be looking at rules with variables in them. So our rule for this pattern chart is y equals seven plus x. So whatever number we're gonna have for x, we're going to plug into our rule and see what the corresponding term would be, which is a big math word, which just means the numbers that go together for the rule when x is zero. So if our rule is y equals seven plus x, if x equals zero, seven plus zero is seven. So if you put a zero in to this rule, you're going to get out a y that equals seven, right? It's a lot easier than it looks. A lot of people get freaked out by this, but it's actually pretty easy, right? If we have x equals one and we follow the same rule, then seven plus one would be eight. So if we put in a one and follow the rule, seven plus x, we're going to get a y that equals eight. And again, two plus seven would be nine. So when x is two, y is going to equal nine. So this might make a lot of sense, but what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna take this pattern chart and we're going to put it on a coordinate plane. But first we need to review the number one rule of the coordinate plane. You've gotta shuffle on the carpet before you climb up the stairs. You've gotta shuffle on the carpet before you climb up the stairs. You've gotta shuffle on the carpet before you climb up the stairs. You've gotta shuffle on the carpet before you climb up the stairs. Yes, you gotta shuffle on the carpet before you climb up the steps. I love that song it is fantastic now that we remember that and we know what a pattern chart is let's take a look and put the two together to make a math monster <laughs> if you look this is the pattern chart we just did following the rule right when x was zero seven plus zero was seven one plus seven was eight and two plus seven was nine, right? So this is the pattern chart we just did together. Now what we wanna do is we wanna, just like we did in our previous lesson, we wanna take our corresponding terms, our ordered pairs, and put them onto the coordinate plane. So if I had zero, seven, I'm gonna shuffle over zero and climb up seven, and my ordered pair would be right there. Then I'm, if I shuffle over one and climb up eight, my ordered pair would be right there. And if I shuffle over two and climb up nine, my ordered pair would be right there. And what you notice is, you don't have to, but if you did connect the dots, you notice that I formed a straight line. If you kept going with this rule, your next one would be, if your x was three, right? Seven plus three would be 10. So our next one would be right here and it would just continue the line. Here's the cool thing about following a rule. If you follow a rule, assuming that all the numbers are raised to the zero first power, which is middle school talk, don't worry about that, I just don't wanna lie to you then you're going to form a straight line. So that's one way you can check your rule. If you follow the correct rule and there's no exponents, which again, is something you're gonna learn about a little bit later, then you're going to form a straight line. Let's take a look at a we do and make it one step harder. If you notice now, we've actually added a description of what our pattern chart is telling us, okay? So uh, this example should be in your notes so you can follow along with me and mark it down and we can do it together. If you don't have your notes, you can check out the description to the video and there'll be a link to guided notes there. So it says the chart below shows the relationship between the number of days, x, and the amount of cookies Jeffrey ate, y. What that means is our x-axis is going to be the amount of days. That's why it said comma x. It's called a, a positive, which is a literary term, which means they put a comma and then describe the word. You're welcome reading teachers. One way you can solve context clues questions. Um, and so our X is going to represent the days and then our Y is going to represent the amount of cookies. Okay. So sometimes 
they're going to tell you what the pattern chart means. In one day, how many cookies did Jeff eat? So if X was one, and I follow my rule of X minus one, one minus one is zero. So in one day, Jeff ate zero cookies. So let's go ahead and we can just graph that now. So I'm gonna shuffle over one and put my ordered pair right there. If I keep following the same rule on the second day, X is two, because it's a second day, two minus one would be one. So on day two, Jeff ate one cookie. And then on the third day, three minus one would be two. And so on the third day, Jeff ate two cookies. So now I just wanna graph those ordered pairs. So I'm gonna shuffle over two, climb up one. Then I'm gonna shuffle over three and climb up two. And again, you can see there's no exponents over here, which means my rule is going to form a straight line. The cool thing about this is now, now you can, because you can see the straight line and you can see the pattern of going over one and up one, you can answer a question like, how many cookies did Jeff eat on the fifth day? Well, on the third day, if he ate two, that means on the fourth day he would have eaten three, and on the fifth day he would have eaten four. So you can actually use your graph that you're making by plotting your points to help you answer questions. So that's one way they try to disguise these easy questions is by giving you a lot of words up here to try to confuse you and telling you different things. But really all they did was they told us, okay, X is gonna be days, Y is gonna be cookies, so on the first day, he ate zero cookies. On the second day, he ate one cookie. On the third day, he ate two cookies, right? We just followed our rule to help us fill in our pattern chart. Our we do challenge zone problem, okay? We, we're taking it to the next level by giving you two different pattern charts and then a question to answer. So it says the chart below shows the number of fish Y that Ken and Andrew caught over three days. So that means our Y is going to be our fish that we caught, okay? So Y is going to be fish. So I should, I'll scribble it out, I won't put an X, that could be confusing. And then it says over three days, X. So our X is going to be our days. So now they're giving us, it's the same type of problem, but now they're telling us what our X and Y um, axis is. So our X axis is going to be our days. And then our Y axis is going to be the amount of fish that we caught. So we still have to do the same thing. We have to answer the question using our pattern chart. So for Ken, we know that our X is our days and our Y is our fish, and we're following the rule X plus one equals Y. So on the first day, if I plug in one for X, one plus one is two. So on the first day, Ken caught two fish. On the second day, okay, so if X was two and I plug it in, two plus one is three, so Ken caught three fish, right? So the order pair would be two, three. And on the third day, if X was three, three plus one is four. So we're gonna say Y equals four. So let's go ahead and grab Ken's line. I'm gonna do it in green. You might not have a different color. You can just do it in pencil and pen. Or if you only have a pencil, you can do both of them in pencil, that's okay. So my three order pairs are one, two, two, three, and three, four. So one, two. So on the first day, he caught two fish. On the second day, he caught three fish. And on the third day, he caught four fish. So here is my line, right, for Ken. If I plotted those, again, making a straight line because I don't have any exponents in my rule. Now, if I go back to Andrew, Andrew had a different rule. He had y equals x minus one. So if on the first day, if you plug one in for x, one minus one is zero. So on the first day, he caught zero fish. On the second day, plugging in two for x, two minus one is one, y would equal one. And on the third day, three minus one would be two, so y would equal two. So on the third day, he caught two fish. On the second day, he caught one fish. And on the first day, he caught zero fish. Now we want to plot those points because that's what our question told us to do. So my first points can be one, zero. Then I'm gonna have two, one. Then I'm going to have three, two. And you can see right here again, I have a straight line that I am forming. My question says, if the pattern continues, which person would have more fish on the fifth day? Okay, so if I go over to X being five, and I look up, I can see that Andrew would have had four fish, 
and Ken would have had six fish. So my answer to this question should be Ken. You can see that although it's multiple steps, the math is the same thing we did in our first I do. We want to fill out our pattern chart by following our rule and then plotting those points on a coordinate plane can help us answer silly questions about fish. But we are still following the same coordinate plane rule, which is you got to shuffle on the carpet before you climb up the steps, no matter what your ordered pairs look like, whether or not they're in parentheses or a pattern chart. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you join the Instructive Beats family. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'd love to have you join us on those social media sites as well. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Please check out our Coordinate Plane song and stick around for our next Coordinate Plane lesson. Instructive Beats, out!